Welcome to Inference for Categorical Data, the fifth course in the statistics track. Categorical data arises in any situation where the values that you're recording are categories, not simply numbers. One particularly rich trove of categorical data can be found in the General Social Survey. Every year, researchers visit the homes of Americans and ask them a long list of questions about their history, behavior, and opinions on a number of topics of interest to social scientists. There are generally a few thousand people that are surveyed every year, but researchers would like to make general statements about the opinions and social trends of the entire United States. This process of inference from the sample to the population is possible because the researchers are careful to select their respondents in such a way that their sample is representative of the population of all Americans. The result is a data set where each sampled respondent is one row and each column is their response to a single question. In R, a sample of this data is stored as a data frame called GSS. If we glimpse the data frame, we learn that there are 25 variables, a unique identifier for each respondent, then a series of demographic variables like age and sex. Note that while these two are numerical data, represented as doubles, the remaining variables are factors, R's term for categorical data. If we go farther down, we get into the opinion questions. The happy variable records if respondents on balance feel happy or unhappy. I'm curious to learn what the distribution of responses are to this question in the most recent year of the survey, 2016. My first step is to filter the data set to only include those rows and save it as a new data set called GSS 2016. Since this is categorical data, I'll visualize it with a bar chart. We learned that the most common response was happy. Let's go a step farther and calculate the exact proportion of the sample that responded this way. To do that, we want to summarize the happy variable with a single proportion. Look to the middle of this line. We ask for which respondents their happy value is exactly equal to happy. This results in a column of trues and falses. You can find the proportion of trues by simply taking the mean. I'll save that as p hat. We learned that around 77% of our sample is happy. This should be a good estimate of the percent of all Americans that are happy, but it's not a sure thing since we have only asked a small proportion of them. To capture the uncertainty on our estimate, we can create a confidence interval by adding and subtracting two standard errors from p hat. We can estimate the standard error by using the bootstrap. We start with our full data set and specify the variable that we'd like to focus on. This is done with the specify function. Next, we draw a sample from that variable with replacement that is of the same size as our original data set. This recreates the random variation that creeps in when you draw a sample from the population. We do this many times to create many bootstrap replicate data sets. This is done with generate. Next, for each replicate, we calculate the sample statistic. In this case, the proportion of respondents that said happy. This is the role of calculate. At this point, I'd like to save this object, the collection of statistics from repeated resampling of our dataset. From there, we can look at their distribution using ggplot. This is called the bootstrap distribution. The standard deviation of this distribution is a good estimate of the standard error. So our last step is to extract that using summarize. To implement this, we start with our GSS data and then specify that we will focus on the happy column. Next, we will generate 500 replicate data sets through bootstrapping, and for each one, calculate the proportion that are happy. When we print this new object, we see we now have a data frame that contains 500 p hats. If we create a density plot of these statistics, we see that it's unimodal and symmetric and ranges from roughly 0.7 to 0.85. If we calculate the standard deviation of that stat variable, we see that it's about 0.034. With this standard error in hand, we can form our confidence interval by adding and subtracting twice that value from p hat. We learn that we can be 95% confident that the proportion of all Americans that are happy is between 0.705 and 0.841. Okay, now it's your turn to practice with confidence interval.